So hello and welcome to Airfil Mixologist. Today well, I'm going to start with a with a three-part series on what I believe is the most advanced version of a holy carb that you can get, which is a, a holy carb with Weber power plates. Now I'm going to do a video, I'm going to do a series of videos around okay what the power plates are in the first place, uh, what, why I think they are absolutely brilliant, this product is, it is insanely great. Uh, and also I'm going to also give some reflections about why I think that this product was not probably the commercial success that it should have been. So let's let, let, let's go through the basics. So this is this is a carb that I built. Incidentally, this is the best carb I've ever built. It, it has lots of new parts, and I spent like a year chasing the the wear power plates because they're quite rare bits of kit. They don't just kind of they, they don't you cannot just get get them anywhere. And I think that. Um, well, let, let me talk you through the basics of the Weber power plate. Um, it comes in a in a two plate configuration, ju just like this. So they are like one part divided into two, and what they do essentially <coughs> is move the all the jets and the air correction in a place that you can easily access it um, and that um, that increases tunability uh, significantly um, I'm going to go into that in, a, in, a, in another video um, the other thing the other thing it does is that it changes the emulsion characteristics of a holy carb and makes it into as if it was a Weber carb. So let's let's show you here. It this is this is the emulsion tube and the jets from a normal Weber and you you have the air corrector here. Anyway, so all of this stuff I can I can change very easily in a carb like this. And if this was a holy situation, uh, it would take me quite a lot more. So what are the basics? Um, well, one other thing that I, that I want to say about, about this, the, the Weber power plates in general is that they are, from an engineering point of view, an extremely high quality item. And you can pick that up if you've been around cups uh, quite a lot. You can pick that up through the electroplating, so the anodizing that is done um, in this cup, it's of a very high quality. Whilst I've seen a lot of cups around that the anodizing is not very good, it wears off immediately. This is this is this is proper, solid, a uh, well-made uh, product. So what it is, obviously, because we are adding quite a longer plate, uh, you would obviously need. It uses the normal holy gaskets on, on these two sides and the kit comes with a longer screws and also if you look at this this is like a pivot for the accelerator pump so so that's kind of like the basics uh, of the configuration so I'll show you here see if you can see it you have got this is a this up uh, 4150 but you can see the, the accelerator pumps, how they work, having this um, this kind of this arm, the bent arm, and basically means that you can use that you can use the normal accelerator, but the the normal accelerator pump arms, you, you can use it as normal. And the good thing about about these plates is that they can fit pretty much any a 4150 any 4160 carb I mean this one in particular is an 800 CFM uh, which is quite a rare carb to get the 800 CFM because this is the biggest flowing carb that uses the 750 CFM 
plate. This this plate is a 750, but because of the size of the of the Venturis, or what you would call in in kind of Weber terms, this is an 800 CFM carb. Um, and and as, and as I told you, I spent absolutely ages uh, searching for the parts uh, to build this up. So what I'm going to do in the next in the next episode, uh, I'm going to give you some thoughts about tunability based on my own experience about working with this carb in an actual car. Um, so so stay tuned, and I'll give you I'll give you a bit more of information about them uh, in a few in in the ne on the next video. Thank you.